morning, everyone. And it is morning because the sun's right there. Back from my trip, it's been seven days since I've been on the lawn. Um, when I got home on Sunday, uh, I noticed there were dry spots. Take a look at these pictures right here. I posted those into my community feed. Um, yesterday, I watered those heavy. I did a deep watering and basically zapped them out of existence. Not really there anymore. Maybe the angle from where that picture was taken would be better for everybody to see. It was right back here. It's always where it dries out is up on that hillside. That's the thin spot. Now, I let everything grow <clears throat> just to see what my turf was doing, how it was responding. So again, it's been a week. So this section right here where I'm standing um, is where I cut the little cornhole piece in. So I am gonna do that, I'm gonna do that in a minute. But I wanted to check one week's worth of growth on this. Now, the other section of the lawn that was already a little longer uh, was at about an inch and a half uh, when I left. Um, that seems to be pushing like into the two to three inch range now. It's starting to get up there, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so I look, it looks like <coughs> just based on this, it's growing about an inch and a half a week. So in 90 degree temps, that's pretty good. Um, I don't expect much out of it because again, this is not a heavy nitrogen feeding since May. It's been since May. And when I say heavy nitrogen feeding, uh, a third of a pound of in was what I got then. So as you know, I've been running this super short and just seeing how it holds up, uh, how much more water is going to be needed or anything else like that. Now, now here's what I'll tell you. The pace has been such that I mow every other day to maintain the short grass, to keep it healthy. And what that's doing is really getting the grass tight, really, really tight. Um, and now normally what you give up and what you sacrifice when you go to shortcut grass is root depth because anytime you cut off that solar panel, the top of the grass, this is where you're going to get your chlorophyll production, um, photosynthesis is taking place, your, your carbohydrate production, everything else like that. So it was, the plant is going to push more energy into maintaining the top growth and not pushing down into the roots. Here's the thing. That would be very typical if you were feeding on a very typical program. You know, if I was running a pound of in every six or eight weeks, like honestly is what's recommended, um, that would be what's happening. The nitrogen would be getting used up to try to just support that top growth and there would be nothing going to the roots. Well, since I've been doing this in a very different way with considerably lower in and higher soil foods, um, greater amounts of humic, yeah, you know, you've seen me run the D thatch out here. I've run some 402, some 700, different things like that. I'm able to maintain a healthy stand of grass that's still pushing the root depth where I want it, which allows me to get recovery when I do have dry spots. So what I'm gonna do right now, um, I'm gonna cut this thing out, just give it a quick level back to where it needs to be. And then today I'm going to feed it. And it is going to get a dose of 1801 today. Not a high one. And I, what I want everybody to understand about cool season turf versus warm season turf, and plenty of other people talking about it, so maybe you don't need to hear from me. You gotta think about it like this. Cool season turf is much like a two-humped camel, okay? It's got a growth period in the spring where it really needs energy. Then everything slows down and it goes to, <clears throat> I won't call it do dormant, but <clears throat> if you let it go dormant, it would. It would go drought dormant, summer dormant, and then it would come back out. So you have this period where you spike it, relax, spike it again going into the fall. So that's gonna come up in September, October, November is when the grass gets into this next growth phase. Whereas with Bermuda, St. Aug, um, centipede some of these others you are going to have just the center line hump for summer feeding so you tend to push more up uh, as the grass is coming out of dormancy and feed through that season and then you can taper off back on the other end so we're going bookended on the cool seasons high and high with very low feeding in the middle and that's what's keeping the grass beautiful like this so let me cut this thing out real quick and then um, we'll do talk about 1801 a little bit on summertime applications, what you should and shouldn't do, okay? Let's do it.
Feeling lonely on a Saturday night I thought some whiskey would make it all right Half a bottle started to work That's when I thought, what could it hurt? Staring at your number, thinking too hard Thinking of the last time, how I broke your heart Phone was ringing, didn't know I hit sin There you were, on the other end Well I must be out of my mind To call you up girl, in the middle of the night I got to be out of my mind Thinking one time we all right. Okay, so that's done. Cornhole pitch is back in play. Back to half an inch. Inch and a half everywhere else. Um, grass is looking really good. Thick. Wonderful. So... This is where you start to have to ask yourself some questions. This is, this is where it gets really important on feeding on a schedule versus feeding the need. So usually right now, this is when you would want to put an app out, but also six weeks ago is when I would have wanted to put an app out. Um, and the grass just hasn't shown signs of needing it. So even now I'm just, I'm self debating whether or not I'm going to do this app of 1801, but here's, Here's what I'm seeing and why I'm actually going to do it. So, like I said, the grass is thick. It's green, it's healthy. Where I think I will start to get concerned is in about two to three weeks. And if I don't feed it now, I could be playing catch up in a little bit of time. And August for me is going to be very busy, uh, a lot of time gone, and I feel like now I need to sort of fortify it through a time that I'm not going to be around. So, um, I'm going to throw an 1801 down at 15 ounces. It's not a heavy rate. It's kind of a standard app rate and um, kind of prep it for September because I'm going to start bringing up the feedings as we get into that time because I want the lawn to go to bed with a full belly. So um, today is just going to be a prep for that time frame. Uh, I have so much travel in August, I'm gonna miss at least three weeks out here. So it's going to be, it's going to be kind of cool to see what happens after getting back from these multiple trips. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do today. Now, here's the thing. I don't want anybody to ever feel uh, nervous or scared about applying 1801 in the summertime. There's nothing wrong with that. You're gonna put it out with an appropriate amount of water. If you're using a hose-in sprayer, if you're using a tank sprayer, um, you know, uh, pros actually, a lot of the guys here in Utah I'm actually switched to 1801 when it's been hot, um, up in the upper 90s to 100s down there. And um, it's a good switch over at the moment. They've got at least two gallons per minute flowing out of their guns. So no problem, no risk of burn or anything like that. So you can apply that fearlessly. Um, and again, if everybody's, you know, any of you DIYers out there are using 1801, through hose-in sprayers, there's more than enough water coming out of that gun, um, out of that cup to, to make sure that you're gonna get a good mix down on the lawn. So, um, I'm gonna knock out some 1801 right now, sweet. Okay, so it's as simple as that. So what did I just do? Put out 1801. What's 1801? 18% in, it's got two forms of urea, it's got a slow release aspic, humic, fulvic, kelp, sulfur, iron, potassium. Um, you're, you're putting out a good complement when you put that material out at 
this time. Well, any time, really. It's just a good general purpose feeding. So, again, lawn looks great. It's going to be hot today. 90, 91, something like that up here. Um, still dry. I think that we actually have some thunderstorms in the forecast in the next couple of days. So that'll be cool. But we're on cruise control. Um, perfect? No. Perfection sucks. Uh, there's still stuff that can always be done. And if it couldn't, what, what would be the fun? So um, I'm going to throw the cornhole boards out here and be ready to rock and roll. So that's it. Thank you guys. I will uh, see you soon. You know, make sure you send your questions, comments, whatever you got. I'm more than happy to answer those and anything else you may have. Share pictures, all the whole kind of thing, okay? See you guys soon. Half a bottle, turn to half again more. There you were staring at my front door. The smile melts me, makes me lose all control. Maybe that's the whiskey, but we fall to the floor. I must be out of my mind Let's call you a girl in the middle of the night I must be out of my mind Thinking one time I'm gonna be all Hours later, laying awake in my bed My mind is racing, thinking about all you said It's only one night, that's all it will be Once it's over, don't you ever call me